Goldeneye. It's a pretty good game. And it's what I'd call an objective-based shooter. Now, I don't know if that's an actual thing. That's just what I call it. Are objective-based shooters good? Why did they die out after Goldeneye Perfect Dark? And should they come back? Well, let's see if we can answer those questions. And let's go play Goldeneye. Now, this is Goldeneye on the N64. This is Goldeneye on the N64 being speedrun. And this series of videos is Goldeneye on an emulator being speedwalked. So let's get into it, shall we? Amazing. So this is the file slick screen where you can create files, of course. It's pretty self-explanatory. You can select a single-player mission here or play multiplayer. And this is the mission slick screen, so we've got to start with damn the first mission. And we've got three difficulties. I'll go over this at another time, but we're going to play the toughest one, which is for the high testosterone men. Here's the four different objectives. Neutralize, all alarms, install cover modem, data backup, and bungee jump platform. And please pause and read this at your own pace, but I'll, I'll sum it up real quick. Bond's got to go on. He's got to take out a chemical weapon facility that's producing nerve gas, and it's at a dam in Russia. And um, he's going to bungee jump off a dam to get there, which sounds like a pretty... Anyway, let's quickly see the movie's version of dam. We get an aerial shot of the dam, it's a very beautiful shot, and then Bond running along through a fancy gate, and after facing absolutely no opposition, he bungee jumps off. Cuts a hole in the ventilation and he gets into the chemical facility. Well, let's see how the Bond of the game fares, shall we? Here is the titular dam, the Bailey Moore Dam, Archangelist USSR, nine years ago. Kind of strange to set off the game in the past. And the camera swoops in, all cinematic light, we've got a truck driving along, a man there, and there's Bond looking around very suspiciously. So we start the game off with a PP7 silenced, which is quite a nice gun, and if things get desperate we have our slappers. And so let's continue on. So our first guy's just around the corner here. A Siberian guard, I believe he's called, and he's carrying a KF-7 Soviet, a weapon you'll see a lot early on. Now, it's good to save ammo in this game, so what you want to do, if if possible, is to aim in like this and try and go for the head. Oh, they don't do a very good job here. These guys aren't too dangerous, though. They take a long time to aim, and they're not very accurate, so don't be too worried, even on the hardest difficulty. Let's take him out in this watchtower and grab this sniper rifle of unknown design. Um, and there's two guys here in the tunnel. One's seen me, though, so let's take him out. And so I want to show you here that if a guy gets close up to you, right like this, so close you can smell him, his gun sticks through you so he can't actually damage you. And they're quite useless at that point. Unlike in Perfect Dark, we'll talk about that in other times, let's go down this nice little watchtower stairwell. And here, with the sniper rifle, you can whack with the buttstock, which is very handy. Here's Hancock showing off the weapon in real life, the Walter PPK. And here is the Internet Movie Firearm Database, a wonderful website that gives some details on the weapon. 